Okay, we finished part one, so we move on to part two. With both parents' genotypes in hand, we have the information needed to create and fill out the 4x4 Punnett square for the dihybrid cross. We'll use the FOIL method to determine all possible gametes the first parent could produce for the two genes. Okay, FOIL, the letters stand for first, outer, inner, and last. It's uh, very similar to when you uh, multiply two binomials in algebra. Here, we're not actually multiplying, we're just doing combinations. So FOIL, the F means combine the, combine the first alleles for each gene. So the big T is the first allele for the first gene. The big V is the first allele for the second gene. You combine those, you get big T, big V. The O stands for outer, so combine the outer alleles for each gene. Well, uh, the big T is the outer gene allele between the two T's. It's on the outside of the expression. And the little v is the outside v uh, because it too is on the outside of the expression. Then we go for the I, which is for inner, when we're spelling out FOIL. So we combine the inner alleles for each G. Well, each gene. That would be the little t and the big V. They lie in the middle. Those are the alleles, one for each gene, that lie in the middle of the expression. Then finally, L for last. Combine the last alleles for each gene. Well, the last allele of the T's is a little t. The last allele for the V's is the little v. So those are combined. So that's what we end up with. Big T, big V, that's a possible gamete. Big T, little v, that's a possible gamete. Little T, big V, that's a possible gamete. And little T, little v, that's a possible gamete for the first parent. Now we use the FOIL method again, this time to determine all possible gametes that the second parent could produce for the two genes. Um, we'll go through this quicker. FOIL, we do the first. The, the outer, the inner, and the last, and we end up with those. Now, we've got the genotypes, uh, the possible genotypes for gametes of each parent. Now what we're going to do is use one parent's possible gametes to label the rows in the Punnett square. So we'll take the first gamete for this parent and assign it to the first row. The second um, gamete, that is allele combinations for a gamete, into the second row. The third for the third and the fourth for the fourth. That's pretty straightforward. So those are the four possible gametes that this parent can produce. Now we use the other parent's possible gametes to label the columns in the Punnett square. So we'll go again. The first allele we came up, the first allele combination we came up with goes in the first column, the second in the second, third in the third, and fourth in the fourth. Actually, what order you apply these in, for example, what order you apply these four in does not really matter. What order you apply these four in doesn't really matter, as long as all four of these come from one parent and all four of these come from the other parent. Now we have our rows and our columns labeled. What's the next step? For each square, for example, this square right here in the Punnett square, for each square, combine the alleles in the row label with the alleles in the column label. This models sexual reproduction, the fusion of two gametes, one gamete from each of two parents, to produce a zygote. For clarity's sake, if the zygote is heterozygous for a gene, write the dominant allele first. For example, we would write big T, little t instead of little t, big t. We'll see this actually in practice in a, in a couple of minutes. Okay, so we combine the two T's. We got big T, big T, so we write those in. Big V, big V, write those in. That square is done. We've got big T, big T, write those in. Big V, little V, write those in. That square is done. Big T, little T, big T, little T, big V, big V, put those in. Big T, little T, and big V, little V, and write those in. Come down to the second row. We've got big T, big T, little V, big V. So if you're reading them in order, we would have big T, big T, little V, big V. But remember the rule about putting the dominant allele first. So the big V goes first, and then the little V. Why do we do that? Well, later we're going to have to count up how many times each genotype appears in, in this uh, Punnett square. Well, here, when we've arranged them in the same order, dominant before recessive, it's easy to tell that this square and this square have the same genotypes. But if we had put the little v and then the big v, these will not appear instantly anyway to be matches. We have to do more mental processing when we're counting up how many times each genotype appears, where if we just do it now, it's quite simple.
Okay, then we combine for the next square. Uh, big T, big T, little V, little V. And I'm not going to go through this for all of them, explaining each one. But as you can see, step by step, we go down to the third row, we do the first column, combine those. Third row, second column, combine them. Third row, third column, combine those gametes as if uh, fertilization had occurred, and so on. Then we drop down to the fourth column, combine those. Fourth, <laughs> I'm sorry, fourth row, first column, then fourth row, second column, fourth row, third column, fourth row, fourth column. And we're done. We filled out all 16 squares of this dihybrid clinic's 